Welcome back to He's Here and He's Beautiful. Yes, folks, this week we had confirmation that Urien Timber, Arsenal's £38 million summer signing, was back in training with the Arsenal squad, and it was a beautiful sight to see. While he isn't fully involved in every aspect of the sessions just yet, getting back in the rondos and back amongst the group doing some work with the ball is another huge step in his recovery. Mikel confirmed he won't be available for Monday's game against Sheffield, but the fact he had to even clarify that and was then willing to wax lyrical about his qualities, as we'll hear later, tells us that we're looking at a matter of weeks, not months, before we see him back in an Arsenal shirt. It is incredibly exciting. And in this video, I want to talk about how I think Yuri and Timber might change our game model. But first, I want to pump the brakes a little bit. According to Andy Williams, a consultant knee specialist who works with Premier League teams writing in The Athletic, after working with 232 professional footballers, the average ACL recovery time he's seen is eight months for what he refers to as a pure ACL tear, i.e. a tear, but with no other significant surrounding damage to other ligaments. On the surface then, Timber appears to be recovering far ahead of schedule. We know, as it was confirmed by James Green on Sky, who spoke to Arsenal's medical team, that the initial incident on the 12th of August 2023 was a pure tear, as outlined, with no further complications, and the training photos and videos came out on the 28th of February 2024, putting him a full six weeks ahead of Andy Williams' average timeline, which is really impressive. Part of this, of course, is down to his physical profile and age, but it sounds like a lot of it is down to his attitude as well, with Mikel saying how happy he is with him and providing regular updates over the last few months, suggesting he's been flying through his recovery with the physios pleased with his application and work ethic. It all sounds great on the surface, but saying when Timber has recovered is going to be a little bit harder to define. We might hear that recovery takes eight months on average, but what do we actually mean? Is that when they're back in full training, back on the bench, back on the pitch, the next man of the match performance? In reality, unfortunately, the real recovery takes much longer. Williams talks about the potential of future injuries due to a lack of match conditioning and mentions that the recovery back to the previous level can take up to two years or certainly 18 months. Then, of course, there's the mental aspects of the injury, which Hector Bellerin so brilliantly documented for his own ACL recovery journey a few years back, which may take even longer. Currently, in the minds of many Arsenal fans with excited expectations, Urien Timber is the best player in the world and he's going to revolutionise our football from the moment he steps back onto the pitch. Timber was brilliant in pre-season and in those few games, but I'm seeing people already put him in their best Arsenal eleven, having played 45 minutes in the Premier League. I have no doubt about the quality long term, but I do think we need to be careful we don't set this guy up for a fall and remain patient with the inevitable setbacks and mistakes from lack of sharpness. There's a lot of road left to go. However, all that said, I do think we can begin to be cautiously optimistic about the medium term future. And I'm looking at possibly the back end of this season and certainly the beginning of next for what I think could be a very exciting evolution for Arteta's Arsenal. Something that's frustrated me this season is despite Arsenal being in another consecutive title race, we probably haven't actually seen the full idea that Mikel was planning for in his head in the summer of 2023. You don't sign Timber for nearly £40 million to sit on the bench, and although Partey has had another injury hit season, when he's at his best level, he has to be starting. That's two likely starters then, heavily involved in our build-up, who just haven't been there. That's like playing our front five all season without Saka and Martinelli. We've had other injuries, of course, and other areas of the game have been affected, but crucially, our build-up has probably looked different from what might have been envisaged last year. At the very least, options have been reduced. All of that means I think we've had to postpone some conversations on what might have been referred to as a new-look Arsenal in 2023 on a different timeline. In short, I think we were due to see far more change and variation in how Arsenal build up this season than we have done. And now Timber is on his way back, I think we'll see what was always the plan. I think we're going to see much more variation in terms of which fullback comes inside from game to game and match to match. But I'd also go further and say that I think there's going to be more freedom and more options for everyone in build-up. When Mikel was asked about Timber's recovery in his most recent presser, he said this. His versatility, the quality that he has to play in different positions, especially in attacking phase, uh, the spaces that he can occupy and certain qualities that nobody else has in this course to do that. And when Timber was first injured, Mikel talked about him on both sides, saying he could do very different things. This positional versatility is the basis of why I think he can be so transformative and it's linked to his qualities, which, as Mikel says, nobody else in the squad has. I'm having to be really careful with actual game footage at the minute because I got copyright struck for something I literally didn't do but go and watch any of the monetized comps that haven't been struck yet on youtube and you'll see what i mean outside of these screenshots he is an elite ball carrier from deep with a special quality to drive inside from either side 
and attract pressure. His numbers tell you that, with the progressive carries looking especially exciting. His two-footedness means he can receive the ball with no angle bias from either side, and also means he can take it on the half turn in any position, centrally, with his back to play and drive. He's actually fairly conservative in the first phase from what I've seen, but once he gets into the second phase, his personality shines, and that means he's really dangerous on the underlap, which is what I think Mikel's referring to, either with carries or runs. I think Timber's return could be huge for Martinelli. So with these qualities and the versatility that Mikel speaks about, what can Timber actually do for us in practice? He can come in and create the superiority inside in a 3-2 or stretch the pitch wide for us in a 2-3 or 2-4. He can be your third centre-back either side in a three in possession or he can take the ball off your goalkeeper who's stepping into the first line, as we sometimes see Raya do, as a single pivot. I don't think he has the on-ball personality for a central centre-back and I wouldn't like to see him be our main progressor, but the amount of variety he gives you in build-up is amazing. Who else in our squad is as comfortable on the ball in as many areas deep on the pitch? Back to play, facing play, out wide, inside, outside, in a two on his own and either side. I think, and we've seen for Ajax a lot, Timber can do it all. And Mikel seems to think so too. Now let's look at an example scenario to see what that might actually mean in practice. Arsenal are nil-nil after 25 minutes in a tough game away at Stamford Bridge. I said an example scenario, not reality. Chelsea are pressing in a narrow 4-3-3 and their wide players are getting out to us quickly out wide where the spaces are. We're struggling to make that entry pass as we're overloaded in the middle. Porto did this well. Timber is our inverted, collapsed, whatever you want to call it, fullback alongside Rice. They might swap over here and there, but it's not doing much good. Timber pulls out wide into a more traditional left fullback role and Arsenal get a bit of joy for a while as he's connected with Martinelli more often and we're bypassing the middle. But Chelsea soon respond, dropping into more of a 4-4-2 mid block and snuffing that out, managing to man mark Erdegaard, who is now dropped in along with Rice. Timber's then asked to become a bit freer and start to carry a bit more through the middle to attract players and create space, but Chelsea are well set up and managed to snuff that out pretty quickly. Again, example scenario. Asking for one of their players to track Timber inside. Arteta has seen enough. He takes off Ben White at half-time for Zinchenko, who, now Chelsea are tiring and those wide players aren't as quick getting out to us, is getting more joy in the centre with his progressive passes between the lines to Rice. Timber sits in in White's role and supports Saka, who he assists for a goal on the overlap. We smash Chelsea 15-0. If we're playing a team who we think are going to sit in a low block, we can ask him to carry or have less on-ball responsibility and stop the transition. If we're playing a team who are pressing us man-to-man, -man, he can be the out-ball as the fullback, hugging either touchline we choose. If we're playing a team with a tricky winger, he can shut them down as a traditional fullback out of possession. I don't think we'll literally see that happening game to game to game, but he gives us the options is the point. What other player in our team gives us all this? They all have their own strengths, but I'm talking about the specific positional versatility. Saliba, for all his qualities, isn't as comfortable receiving with back to play. Zinchenko, you worry about him against the best wingers and coming in as a kind of third centre back. And Gabriel probably can't come to the right hand side, ideally, so on and so forth. But that's not all. If Timber can actually play all of these different roles for us, what does that mean for the other players? In a five-game sample, does it mean Ben White can be a bit more adventurous and possibly come into a centre-back role again, with Timber's defensive solidity behind him, as he's more comfortable stepping in centrally from a right-back position than, let's say, a Tomiyasu? Does it mean Saliba can carry a bit more? Something we've all wanted to see if Timber is at right back with more security. Does it mean Zinchenko can push up and play as a midfielder if we think that's what the game needs? Can Rice drop into the central centre-back role when it suits to drag certain players out of pockets if Timber can come in and take the ball where he takes it normally? That's all before what he can offer us in the final third, which could be a whole other video. I'm not saying Timber can do everything to a completely world-class standard, but what I am saying is he could become our Dutch army knife in build-up, because it's normally Swiss. So yeah. Arsenal this season have been all about variety in approach. United at home, we sit off and let them have the ball to stop the transition threat. Fulham at home, we're trying the long diags to Martinelli. West Ham away, we're spamming the half-space crosses into the box. Brighton at home, we're pressing with precision. The principles remain the same, aiming to dominate every phase of play. But our options, our ability to tweak something from moment to moment or game to game is becoming more and more important, and I think we're about to add something to that. Timber's return facilitates what I think will be the future of the way Arsenal play to at least some degree in the first phase with far more variety. And I wouldn't be surprised if we signed another versatile defender in his mould in the summer to continue that move. Quinton, you're up next. Maybe you agree with my thoughts, maybe you don't. Let me know in the comments. But from what Arteta has been saying about Timber and the fact he was willing to play around with the team when Timber was here on the first day against Nottingham Forest, it tells me that some degree of change is coming. We rarely sit still for long. We need to be careful, as I say. Timber's recovery will take time, but I can't help but wonder what might have been this season. It seemingly hasn't stopped us, though. Arsenal have comfortably the best defence in the league at this point, and I think it's about to get even better.
If you like The Different Knock, you can support us on Patreon monthly, or you can buy us a coffee.